you positive heads out there. It's so good to be back with all you beautiful reflections of the one source consciousness that creates and animates all things. If you're new to this podcast, of course, we're super happy to have you here. And if you've been listening and enjoying for a while, I would be super grateful if you would please take a moment to give us a review on Apple Podcasts. It's one of the best and simplest ways to pay it forward and help others find the show so that they too can tap into the powerful perspectives and positive vibrations we are collectively emanating. The other unique and magical way to share this show is by sending any friends you think would benefit from listening to this podcast, our Game with the Universe link at positivehead.com forward slash game also listed in the show notes, which will serve them up a quote-unquote random episode when they click it. Just instruct them before clicking the link to close their eyes for a moment and sincerely ask the universe to queue up the episode that contains the insight and perspectives that they most need to hear at this point in their life journey, and then click to listen to whatever episode is synchronistically served up to them. I have heard time and time again from people about the incredible results they received playing the game. So just tell your friends, magical results are guaranteed or their karma back. All right, all you positive heads. On this week's Soul Share episode, I'm very excited to have my dear friend Ruby Chase here with me on the show. Ruby is a musical alchemist and rising star who takes a ritualistic approach to all of her transformational performances, and I can honestly say she is one of the most stunning reflections of beauty and grace that I have in my own life, and I am just super happy to have you here. Hello, Ruby. Welcome to the show, my friend. Hello. So happy to be here. Yeah. it's uh, We've been talking about this for quite some time, so I always know when there's a lot of lead up to something happening, it's... um. It usually right, results in it's got all the juice. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So I'm gonna start you with my cliche opening question. And it is this. Uh, you're in an elevator. The woman next to you looks over, says, What's your passion? You have 10 floors to answer. What do you say? Mm. <laughs> wow. Good question, woman in the elevator. Yeah, I'd say my passion is creating experiences that can blow people's minds and hearts open. Mm. And I like to do that through music. I like to do that through um, events and even as simple as just going deep with someone. I find that when we give that presence, we can allow for the opening of the mind, opening of the heart, and thus the opening of our world. Yeah. Love that. I love that. Well, if you would, Ruby, share a little bit of your backstory, whatever feels relevant to share. I always like to give listeners context to who the heck they're hearing (laughs) and how you guys, who is this person? So yeah, whatever feels relevant to share. Yeah, I, I come from Salt Lake City, Utah, grew up in a really beautiful home and kind of came out the womb very clearly drawn to music, performance, art. It was very obvious. Um, My parents put me into a fine arts preschool because it was just like so clear. Wow. And by the age of three, they were like, your daughter has perfect pitch and she's, she's really got you know, something in this. She's really drawn to it. And I just continued to lean into this world. So by five, I was asking for vocal lessons and really wanting to act. So my parents were like, oh, what do we do with this (laughs) child? They, They knew one person that was a casting director. So they asked her if she would be open to going to lunch with me as a five-year-old and she did. And she was like, oh, well, she's, she's very well-spoken and bright and shiny and, you know, best I can do, I can give her her an audition. Mm. So she gave me an audition, booked that, gave me another audition, booked that. 
I got an agent and did the child acting thing wow. from five to 25, pretty full on. I didn't know that. And yeah, it was a really potent part of my journey. And I feel like it it just oriented me very clearly to telling stories and the power of stories. And I would be cast in these different roles for a movie or a TV show and and I would live into that mm. and I would experience that character's world. And it made me really attuned to the stories that I was telling yeah. as I – as I aged, as I grew older, as I started my my spiritual journey, and around twenty five, I was I was doing music also throughout that time. Um, starting more like I think I wrote my first song at seven. Joined a international um, choir at the age of eight. We had the Olympics come through Salt Lake City and. I got asked to do a solo in the Olympics oh, wow. in the closing ceremonies. That was really special. And then that kind of spun off into this international choir. And we made a girls pop band of five artists and toured Japan and made an album and wow. did that whole world. And um, it was a very career focused life. You know, I was always really just f- oriented toward the music, toward the art and toward the stories. And then around 25, I was in LA. I was acting, singing, dancing, kind of eggs in a lot of baskets spread pretty thin. And I actually did a plant medicine ceremony and it was very clear. The message was call your agent and your manager tomorrow, take yourself off the books indefinitely and be an artist. You have stories to tell. You are not to tell other people's stories. You are not to speak other people's words. You are to tell your story, speak your words, and lean into music full time. Wow! So I did. I called called my teams and was like, "Hey, I need to I need to go and you know do some self discovery and and lean into my artists." Right. So that has been a potent journey of just kind of untangling any other stories other than a story that I desire to live into mm-hmm. and painting songs and, and narratives that can craft a world that I am excited to hand down to my children and mm. to my children's children and pay for generations. So it's been a really, <laughs> I would say, a journey of unlearning mm-hmm. and stripping away the layers of perfectionism and the polishedness that I gained in my youth growing up on camera and returning to authenticity and coming back to like, okay, why are we human? What are we doing? And where are we going? And how can we craft art around that? Mm. It's so interesting to hear your reflection of that because, um, you know, it's something my son, uh, well, for one, you'll be excited to hear because since you've been here, we just got a piano at the Mystic Manor. And so he was sitting down playing the piano last night um, and talking about his love for music. And he's never really made music, but, you know, he kind of like is very, very into music. And but his big passion, you know, he's 24 is has just become in the last few years acting. And, you know, he has went full down the path of like he's been in like 25 productions in the last you know year a little over a year he just one of them just got into cans and he you know won best indie actor uh in a in a short at an la film awards a few weeks ago and and then he got he got all the way down to the finals to get into juilliard Uh, at a thousand he was in the final 50 and he just went out there and spent three days on an intensive and realized he didn't make it in as the final 15 or whatever. And he was glad because it was a lot of like theater and singing and things that he realized for him. Like I really am, you know, he's really into film. And so that is like, it's just interesting to hear the, like, you know, you started there and it's something that's so present in my own life with my, my son being like, this is my path. And even last night talking about, wow, I love music so much and playing around on our new piano. And my path is fully, you know, and when he was young, we had, you know, intuitive friend give us all these details about his supposed successes and as a big actor and things and who knows such things. But, um, you know, so it's just really interesting to, to see how those often those two fields seem to weave in and out of each other. Right. 
Yeah, they're married in a way. I feel like it's it's the imagination taking form. Yeah. It's art. It's like what can transport you more than an amazing film or more than a great song. Yeah. It's like one right. click of the press play and you can be anywhere. Yeah. So it's it's very limitless and film is such an incredible – I mean the energy on set and the teamwork of how many people it requires to bring a production to life. It's – really profound and there's nothing quite like it. Um, and it's actually started to pop back up for me. I did a film this last year with Teddy Saunders. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. I saw that. It was a short film. I haven't watched it yet, but I saw you guys out. did it. I really want to check it out. Yeah. It's really fun. <laughs> my my commitment in that kind of transition time, I was like, okay, I, I still love acting, but my commitments to myself at the time were, okay, universe, if I am to act – please deliver me the job. Yeah. I don't want to have to audition. Yeah. I don't want to have to rigmarole around it. Mm -hmm. And please allow for it to be stories that I want to tell and characters that I want to live into. So this yeah. was me playing Lucy that was dreaming awake the lucid universe mm -hmm. and was the chosen one to bring the great synthesis forward. And I was like, okay, All right. that's a story I'll I can that. tell. <laughs> I'll take that role. I'll get behind that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah and it, it, I think it really <laughs> helps you to realize, you know, w with acting, that's really what we're all doing, right? We're playing a mm -hmm. role right now. You're playing the role of Ruby Chase, the singer, songwriter, performer, you know, who sounds a certain way and looks a certain way. It's like these avatars are yeah. us putting on, okay, I'm going to play this avatar for a lifetime. And um, so I think, it, it, you know, it, it all such, all the arts, they're such spiritual mediums and so reflective of the truth of the situation. You know, I was reading from the book, I read from every now and then, I'll read from the book Journey of Souls on the show. Are you familiar with Journey mm. of Souls? It's no. like, it's, oh, it's, a, I highly recommend it. It's um, a guy, Michael Newton, doctor who started taking people through um, into past lives through past, uh, through like hypnotherapy. And then when they would pass in those lifetimes, he'd be like, okay, now what? And, and, and he documented over 40 years, all of like, you know, and, and the overlap is crazy of like, here's how it's structured on the other side. And, you know, and, and we have these soul families that we, you know, are closest with, and then, you know, how we plan to come into 3d again and how on that wow, side, I'm it's, it's really intense. And like, I mean, like I said, 40 years of documentation of these, you know, and he's very scientific in his, his approach. So it's, it's like, here's a template according to all these people over decades of his research of how it's actually structured on the other side. And they very much look at it like this is like, okay, I'm going, I'm, I'm, I'm on set. I'm jumping in. I'm going into the big play, you know, and that's how it's sort of viewed from that side, supposedly. And that really wow. rings true. Wow, that really, that really hits home. And even within this lifetime, I mean, how many deaths and rebirths right. do we go through just in this one avatar, in this one body? And I think that especially in the more kind of heady transformational self-help type worlds, mm -hmm. we are gaining a comfortability within the ego deaths within the identity renewals mm -hmm. that are happening mm -hmm. time and time again for us to continue to self actualize because we you know, I mean, think back to our teenage self, think back to your t early twenties self, even think back two three years ago. We're different versions, and allowing ourselves the freedom and space to acknowledge those cycles and those chapters is such a vital peace to be able to continue renewing and becoming and growing. And just like, you know, I had a whole acting chapter and then now I'm getting to have this amazing music chapter and who knows, maybe there's a book that wants to be yeah, written in right. the future. Maybe I fall in love with marine biology. Like, I don't know what it will yeah. be, but in allowing myself that freedom to kind of disconnect my attachment to what my ego and what my my avatar is this life has been such an an interesting journey to to go through and it's a it's a brave juncture to be able to leap off the edge into the unknown of what it 
wants to become, but it's so powerful for us to give ourselves that permission and try it on. Yeah. Explore that. hundred percent. It's, it's like you said, it's a constant renewal. It's like between birth and death is breath and we're constantly being recreated. And you can even think back how many different hats have you worn in your life and how many others will you wear? And, um, I think you touch on something that's so crucial is not being attached to, you know, how it needs to show up. It's like, like, I love the way you put it. Like, okay, if I'm still meant to do this thing, here's the conditions that I would like to set for it to feel in alignment with, with my human level consciousness. And otherwise I'm not, I'm not chasing this. And, and so then just allowing to follow the breadcrumbs, I think as opposed to, you know, because it is such a thing in the world. I mean, I don't know if you and I've talked about this or not, but I originally ended up in California from, um, I grew up in Virginia and went to college in Tennessee. And then I formed a band, uh, my senior year in, um, in college and called Kundalini as this is the late nineties. And what? we moved to California <laughs> to pursue music and, you know, Whoa. Yeah. And, and our bass player's brother was in no doubt. And I saw flyers from us with like these bands that went at like Lincoln Park and, and Hoobastank and Alien Amp. Are these bands that went on to be pretty big? And we were put in the studio with, we were compared a lot to Incubus at the time. And we were put in the studio by Electra Records um, with um, Jim Ward, who produced our first few albums. And I remember, you know, looking back on that journey, we broke up in 2004 And looking back on that journey, the early days, being in the studio, being creative and just like making music and learning how to write. And, you know, we were still we we had so much raw creative talent and still needed to get tighter on, you know, with our instruments and, you know, all of us. But looking back on the early days when it was all about the fun of creating versus later years, it's like we're around all these big bands and our, like I said, our bass player's brother was in no doubt. We were spending every weekend at his house pretty much. It's like they had the biggest song in the world, like, you know, on the FM dial a few years prior to, you know, so we're around like the pinnacle of success and we're still trying to quote unquote make it. And this is of course before, I mean, the world has changed so much since then. I mean, MySpace came out a year after we broke up and, you know, wow. and, and then, you know, Spotify years late, you know, and now it's like, it's a, just a very different musical landscape. Back then it was still like, you have to get a major record deal or, you know, that is the path. And um, so, yeah, I, I'd love to hear you speak to that because I, I think for a lot of people, certainly that would tune into the show there. We are the creator and created rolled into one. So I think our highest excitement is going to be creative in some way, shape or form, because that's what source does. It creates and not necessarily music or the arts. So like, you know, we're speaking up here, but you know, uh, oftentimes, right. Most people have that desire somewhere in them, I think, and uh, whether they pursue it or not. And so, yeah, I'd just love to hear you speak to getting too caught up on making it, you know, and, and yeah. And oh, it's such a, it's such a dance to play with because, well, first of all, I did not know that about you. That is so cool, and we definitely need to jam. Yeah, that would be knowing fun. It's this been a minute, now. But yes, Got would... the piano. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah, I think that this is such a huge question because it's not even exclusive to just music. You know, there's this constant awareness of our status, of our following, of our Mm -hmm. social pull that we have with, with kind of the social media landscape these days. And, and it's a, it's a trap if we let it, if we let ourselves fall into it to create for the need of validation, for the need of having some form of success. But then there's a double edge of it. There's the other side of, you know, as an artist today, it's not actually enough to just be talented. Like you need to be being an entrepreneur. You need to be present on the social platforms and coming up with interesting concepts to promote your music. And it's just a completely different landscape from the time that you were in that band where, and that's the concept I grew up with as well was, oh, I'm going to get discovered. I'm going to be talented. Mm -hmm. Someone with power is going to recognize my talent and bring me 
on to their magic carpet ride right. of fame, right? And that was like how it happens for young pop stars. Right. And I had that concept a lot growing up of like, oh, like I'm just going to be discovered because I'm super talented. And and that has definitely um, – that's been a story I've been rewriting of my own ownership of my own narrative yeah. and what I want to create for myself. And I'm honestly so grateful. Looking back, I'm so grateful that the fame and success didn't come at those early ages. Just who I was at the time and my level of spiritual development and all the things, I think I could have really gotten swept into just the normal everyday story of, okay, they rose to success, they spent their next few years chasing after trying to get another hit, and then they peter out somewhere in the yep. middle, right? Yep. Rather than having the time and space to develop myself without being so yeah. in front of the world and be able to approach this concept of what I now have, my orientation of success is to touch the hearts and minds of those that hear my music and to be able to support in catalyzing their spirit along their path mm -hmm. of whatever that is for them and writing music that's oriented toward that and crafting my own personal frequency around that intention allows for that to move through the sounds. And then when people hear the music, they might not know why it's striking a, a cathartic chord in their heart or why they're having different experiences while listening to the music, but it's because I'm, I'm holding that as my core heart intention. And I understand that if I write a hit song or something that penetrates the mainstream media and that that core nucleus of thought that it has the power to transform at a major level. And so with knowing my prayer and my intention for transformation, it just feels so much more rooted in the why, the why behind mm -hmm. the desire for that fame or success. Yeah. I want to be able to be a beacon. I want to be able to support this incredibly huge Gen Alpha that's coming in right now, that 2.8 million new Gen Alpha are being born every single week. Wow. Right now it's going to be – it's the largest generation in history. It's wow. 2010 to 2014, so they are just entering high school right now, wow. the oldest. And the youngest are still being born – through, oh, it's 2010 to 2024. So until next year, we have these Gen Alpha coming in and I feel inclined to support in providing some direction and to support in providing a beautiful world narrative to live into with, with tenderness and awareness and willingness for the deep work that it requires to grow into a really strong, beautiful human that loves themselves and can stand powerfully as we craft solutions toward driving our future in a good way. And that orientation for my desire of success feels just so much more powerful and magical and worthwhile for a life path rather than the amount of money or the amount of fame or how many followers on Instagram I have. Yep. And it's just such a more potent um, place to be coming from. And it gives so much more fuel to the art. Mm. Yeah. Well, you know, what comes to mind when you say that is um, hearing Jim Carrey talk about this where he said, you know, mm. the, the greatest currency there is, is the, the impact that you have on others or something to that effect, you know? And so mm -hmm. I think when you can move into a place where you fully feel that and it's like, okay, you know, it, it's numbers never end, right? Uh, followers or listeners or any of those things. It's like, this podcast, I've been super blessed. It's in the top 1% of podcasts. And it's, I have to watch myself not to, you know, but, oh, and then the, those, there's, those are so much bigger, you know, and, and then there's the part of me that's like, oh, I don't want to play the game of, I've got to do all this social media stuff. And then it feels like I'm like everyone else and like, ah, oh, screw it. I'm going to just, you know, put it out and whoever listens, listens. And, you know, and then it's like, well, hold on. Well, well you know, why am I, is there a block there? You know, am I preventing it for it's it's such a dance. And 
it, it really is such a great way to really know thyself and get clear on why, where is this coming from? Why, where's the block coming from? Where's the chase coming from? Where's the, you know, and, and when you really put it in perspective, I, I think of um, a, a guest that I've had on the show years back, uh, Charles Eisenstein. Um, when I saw him give a talk one time, he was, he was talking about this concept and he's like, look, who's more important uh, to the world's healing and the betterment of the world, Gandhi or Gandhi's grandmother who raised him? You know, just like that one person having an effect on Gandhi could be more impactful than Gandhi reaching, you know, because, you know, so one listener, one right listener, and you could shift the world more than, you know, millions. And so it's a really interesting thing, I think, to think about as you um, sort of find your way in, in balancing these things and, and knowing that. Those who are a vibrational ma match for your music or your message or your book or your movie, whatever, you know, they're going to find it. It's like, like I said at the beginning of the show, it's like, you know, I, I say that because it's like, oh, you're such a beautiful reflection for you to be in my life. And now, you know, uh, something that I've talked about on the show industry is, is uh, you know, burgeoning this, this new conscious art community and we're going to release a song together on it. Uh, well, I'm helping to to catalyze getting it out there. You and Nate and and Johnny, uh, your song is amazing. And we'll talk more about that in a little bit. Mm. But um, yeah, it's just really cool to 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 understand like, ah, you know, anyone who's a reflection is going to show up. And that's whether it's a, a, a collaborator, whether it's a listener, whether it's a supporter. And that's really all you need to focus on is like, who am I meant to connect with? I will. Um, that's where I've landed in my 100%. long journey with this through the band Kudalini and the podcast and all the things like, um, you know, it's just, it's where I find my sanity with it. It's such an important lens to hold of that surrender and kind of taking ownership for the parts of the artist's process that are our responsibility and the parts that are not up to us. And that was a huge breakthrough for me. A few years ago, I had this huge stockpile of music, hadn't released anything of my own. I'd featured on some stuff, and but I was holding it mm. so tight to my chest with this concept that I was going to meet someone who was Discover Me, mm -hmm. and then I would get this big record deal, in which case then I would have the budget and the support to release my music. Mm -hmm. And... Then the world went into quarantine and I had this song called Patience mm. and I was like, oh my gosh, the world needs patience. Mm. That's what we need right now. We need to be patient. And I felt so selfish for hoarding mm. this song. Wow. And I was like, I, I cannot hold this just in my laptop anymore. Like this needs to be out in the world. It is bigger than me. It is beyond me. This song came through me, but mm -hmm. it is not for me. It is for whoever it's meant to support. And that catalyst, moving that song through and just trusting and leaning into getting that one out, opened the floodgates for me. And I developed this kind of, kind of relationship with my music of of a mother, of a steward. And witnessing my role as the mother of these songs is to birth them, to bring them through, to tend to them. What do you need? Each different song has its different needs. Maybe this one needs violin and this one needs some bass and I can call upon people to support. But my role is to steward the process and to support this being in mm. becoming. And then it gets to a certain point at which I I call this piece of art complete. Even yeah, art, right. technically, you can right. work on forever, right? So we we determine that. And I find in myself, there's like a a moment where my system recognizes it. It's like ah, oh, there's an exhale, and it's like okay, this is the version. This is done. I have no more notes. I'm it's it's ready. And at that point. I ask it again, okay, what do you need? What is your story? How would you like to be released? And I let this song 
drive that process. And it's always individual. You know, each track has its different way. Some are, you know, if it's like a dance banger and it wants a lot of promotion and I'll give it that. And there's been certain songs that I literally didn't even say a word and then just Mm. released it and was like, hey, by the way, this song is out. And taking my control off the steering wheel of what happens after the song gets released was such a surrender mm. for me and and really just alleviated so much weight on my shoulders because at the end of the day I'm not a marketer I'm I'm not the one that's going to be making it a hit or not making it successful or not the thing that's going to do that is people's reception and people's willingness and draw toward that song and so yeah, just I, I think for any artists out there that relate to this and are hoarding whatever their art is for the need either for it to be mm-hmm. perfect or because you don't feel like you can take it to the level it wants to go to, I really encourage letting that down and and getting it to the finish line, getting it out there so that that song can live, that piece of art can yeah. live and do what it's here to do. It's not here to sit in our gallery by ourselves collecting dust. It's meant to be listened to, enjoyed, danced to, and that is where the magic is. And what I find is that's actually my fuel. Getting the music out, it's not about how big the song gets or how 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 the fame or success works within that track, but it's the one individual coming to me and saying, hey, I was in a dark place and that song mm. helped me. Or that is what I put on first thing in the morning and it puts me in the right mood for the rest of my day. Thank you. And just that one person that it touches is worth it. It's worth all the effort. And then it fuels the rest of the process. It fuels the next song. It fuels the next release. And it fuels the artist's process in continuing to create. Absolutely. it's um, Hearing that kind of feedback is the most rewarding thing, you know, like with this show Mm -hmm. and I, you know, receive feedback from people, people leave reviews or write me or whatever. It's like, it never gets old, right? (laughs) To hear that you're, Mm -hmm. you know, whatever you put out in the world has affected someone in that way. And um, yeah, you know, and something that you're also speaking to, there was how many people hoard their gifts because of fear of, will it be good enough? Will it be judged? Will it be reach enough people? Will it all those crazy stories. And so often it's coming from a lack mentality. It's like, first off, perfect is the enemy of good enough. And when you think about the idea and the truth of the situation in which you find yourself, and that is you are a, you know, um, you are essentially a fractal of source consciousness, the creator and created rolled into one. It is you and you are it. It's like, hold on, you're hoarding what? You you are so infinitely abundant. And it's actually in the releasing and moving of energy that you allow more to come through. It's like it's like money. A lot of times if people have this, there's so much blockage around money. It's called currency. It's meant to flow. And so when you're yep. not allowing your creative energy to flow because of negative self-talk and judgment and silly stories of whatever culture has taught you, you know, it needs to be, I was got to put this out and it's got to be the next big hit. It's like, or whatever silly story. It's like, put it out, put it out, put it out. And there'll be more where that came from. And that's totally, that's it's gotta be, it's just so much more juicy when we can let that part go because if we're tied to one song or one piece or one thing to be our identity, to be our ticket into our yeah. life, you know, it's just why cut ourselves short yeah. in that way? We're infinite. We are creators. And the purpose of an artist is to make art. And yeah, I'm just so grateful that all the people that I listened to didn't stop with right. that one song or that one hit. You know, I'm like, oh, like imagine if we were tied to that. It's it's so colorful. Our world is so limitless because of that infinite ability to create. And and I find too when we're constricting around the releasing, 
I see it almost like an infinity Mm. sign. So you have the creative process, which is one loop, which meets in the middle, which is being the vessel. And then there's Mm -hmm. the sharing. And if you are not in right relation with either side of these ebbs and flows of the pendulum, then there's constriction. There can be tightening and there can be, I find, and I believe that this is the root of a lot of anxiety Mm. and depression is that we're not in the flow of life where we are creating and we are sharing our gifts. And either side, if there's one, think even to your own life, you know, is one side more developed than the other? And that's where you can lean into, start developing your ability to create or your ability to share it in that artist process. And if we're holding and hoarding the art, it blocks the funnel from new stuff coming through. And so the more that we can let it out, get good at that process, it's also an art to get music out. It's a dance to learn the art of distribution and the art of how that actual process works of creating cover artwork and getting that song to the completed form. And what is it to take it to a mastering engineer and get it mastered and all these different steps We need practice in that. So the first song is your trial run. You're going to get good or get at least acquainted with the process. And the second and the third and the fourth and whatever that process is, it gets more comfortable. The weight gets lighter the more you lift it. And then you get in a groove where you can create and you can share and you can create and you can share. And that is where the magic shows up. I think of um, acclimating our nervous system to any new, you know, growth edge, right? And uh, Mm -hmm. oftentimes it's like, for speaking is a good, a good example of, you know, getting or performing in any way. It's like, ah, it's so nerve wracking, you know, maybe to people at first. And then as someone who's now you're right. performing constantly, it's a, probably a very different feeling on your nervous system than it was, you know, in the early days, right? When you were hoarding that music. Oh, <laughs> and so it's yeah. really just a matter of like, you know, if it scares you and excites you, it's, it's probably for you. And pushing yourself to that growth edge and, and, um, allowing, allowing things to move. Yeah. And I see it. It's like, it's like a muscle also. I mean, a lot of the things that people see me do and they, they disconnect it from them of like, Oh wow, your voice. I wish I could sing, but I can't sing. And I'm like, (laughs) okay, well, have you ever done a vocal Mm. lesson? Have you ever taken your voice to the gym? Yeah. Because at the end of the day, the, the voice is just a muscle. And it's like if you have never done a push-up right, before, you've right. never done a sit-up before, and you're like, oh, no, 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 I can't do that. But if you do it for a week and then you do it for a month and then all of a sudden you can do 50 push-ups or you know, you can do – you know, infinite amount of sit-ups because you've developed those muscles. Same thing with the voice. Same thing with speaking on stage and performing. It is a muscle. And the more we grow it and develop it, we're going to build more flexibility. We're going to build more agility. We're going to build more confidence. We're going to build more strength in that area. And it just brings it back to whatever it is that you desire to get good at, practice it. If you desire to be good at singing, sing get a coach. If you desire to be someone that can public spe- speak, practice in front of your friends, gather groups together. When there's a sharing circle, raise your hand and offer your voice into that circle. And that is where you can develop that muscle. And on the other side of the fear and nervousness could be some really potent transformation that you get to catalyze in others, which is ultimately the best magic. Yeah, <laughs> it is. It is the most um, fulfilling thing when you see that you've inspired someone else to step into their own mm-hmm. power. Uh, I fully agree with that. Um, well, I know you just released a new track um, called Thrive. And uh, I'd love to yeah. hear, yeah, what is the, what is the sort of uh, meaning and inspiration for Thrive? Yeah, Thrive is basically my booty shaken banger anthem I like that <laughs> for living the best life <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's it's a fun one there's actually this playlist that was going viral on TikTok it's called I'm thriving and a friend of ours runs it and is the kind of creator of of that that brand and I just love the concept of it. And I was watching her videos and seeing her just like 
willingness to say it how it is. And she, her big thing is kind of transitioning from depression to mm. thriving and what that journey is and and the authenticity around that. And that like sometimes it's sad and it's hard, but we can reorient and we can thrive. And that is what is for us. And so I was I was reminiscing on this and feeling like inspired by that playlist. And I I was on our friend's yacht actually and there was a little birthday party and I went up to the very roof of the boat and was looking out and I just had this little melody. I got that boom pal banging at the boom box. It's a mood. Feeling so good. We abundant. Mm. Know what we want. Yeah, it's a vibe. Yeah, we thrive. <laughs> and I was like just that. singing that to myself. I was like, ooh, that's fun. That's groovy. And, and bringing it into this powerful space of like claiming mm-hmm. it. And, and being fearless in our willingness to thrive because I know for me, like they're definitely, I can come up against my white privilege mm-hmm. and my just privilege in general of just how blessed we are growing up in this day and age with the tools and resources and everything that is at our disposal. Like we could eat any kind of food we wanted yep. today. What do you want? You could go to any part of the country if you wanted, you know, it's so unlimited. And sometimes I can, I can feel almost guilty that I get to experience this life when there are people that don't know how they're feeding their kids today on the other side of the world. And this track for me was, was just like leaning into my belief that me thriving is going to bring more good to the world. And that by me having more abundance, I can give more abundance. I can bring more inspiration. And it empowers the worthiness of thriving. And in a fun way where we can can groove, we can put the windows down, we can enjoy and celebrate our lives and kind of turn the lens toward knowing that we're inherently worthy and leaning into that belief and – from that place, we can craft what I call heaven mm. on earth. And for me, heaven on earth isn't isn't some utopian society where now we have no government and we're just running around mm. naked and it, there's no problems and no duality. Like I'm not in the illusion of that yeah. reality. I personally – believe that duality is a part of the human experience, that the full range of emotions is vital to us as humans on planet earth in this lifetime. And kind of back to that story that you had of us having these soul families and we incarnate going down into earth, choose our avatar and we pop in on Mm -hmm, set of mm -hmm. this life, right? I think the reason we came to earth is to experience that fullness and to, to express the fullness of being human. But what heaven on earth is is when we find our vocation, Mm. when we discover the why and the purpose behind our life and we live fully into it. And there's no greater joy that I have experienced than being on purpose, than being in my purpose, living my passions and expressing my heart to the world at large to be able to be witnessed in that expression. That is Mm. my heaven. And for others, it might be raising their family. And for others, it might be completing a woodworking project. And their soul is so fulfilled in that moment where they they feel their why expressed. And so if we can be in the nature of thriving and move from surviving to thriving and choose that timeline, then we can inspire that in others. We can live into our purpose, which will then catalyze more people living into yep. their purpose. And that is what I hold as heaven. That's mm, heaven on earth I for love me. that. And, you know, I think of Wayne Dyer, uh, hearing him years ago, you know, he's passed now, of course, but I remember hearing him give a talk once. He was saying, you know, you can't be sick enough to help sick people. You can't be poor enough to help poor people. Mm. It's, it's in this way, you know, the privilege that you've had, um, you know, a, a sounds like a great family. You didn't have, you were with this super bright Mm -hmm. child with all these talents. And, you know, that's for a reason. And to not to then say, oh my gosh, I should be ashamed. Let me dim that light. It's like, no, how do I use this 
great gift to spread it to as many yeah. others as possible. How do I give them, empower them to do the same things and to have the same level of abundance and to, to be the example of what is possible? It's like, you know, it's back to this, this the, the, the reality of the situation that we're one with the source consciousness that creates and animates all things. No matter what avatar, uh, you know, sort of trajectory you may uh, be on, and there's varying in many, many, many ways, uh, some uh, l- lifetimes that are much more of a struggle than others. We can see that. And of course, and it's like, how do, you know, those who have so much to be grateful for, how do we help? How do we lift up? Because it is it is truly in giving that we receive anyway. And it's like, you, you, you know, the good news about those coming into power and uh, are those even in, I would say in, in the conscious community, you know, is like, we're remembering this truth. It's like, we're, I don't know too many people, you know, I don't see you as your music and your influence continues to expand and grow. It's like, it's all about how many Ferraris you can have, you know, it's like, what is Ruby Chase going to yeah. do with our success? It's going to be create and propagate healing on the planet. And, 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 you know, by being that example and by sharing in, in the right context and in, in, in the right ways. And, and it, that's everything. It is everything. And, and um, yeah, I'm just, whew, it's exciting time to really be able to, uh, you know, I, I think it's inevitable that this energy becomes the dominant energy on the planet. And we may go through a lot of more chapters to get there, but you know, that heaven on earth is, you know, and even when I, when I hear of heaven on earth, I also think of like the idea that time is an illusion and we are in eternity. Now this is eternity. This is it. And this moment is as divine as any other moment ever has been, could be, or will be, I believe. And our aim is how do we bring that awareness? How do we see the beauty in what's happening in any given moment? And how do we how do we, that, that's how I would say we create heaven on earth is through the perspective, through the lens of this is it, you're in it. It's happening now. It's not this thing you're going to get to one day. And it's like, okay, now eternity that starts, you know, well, eternity is, and you are. And yeah. so therefore it is now. Um, and yeah, it's, uh, it's an exciting, exciting thing to, to play with and to, to, to realize. I love that. And I think that having the, it kind of ties back to what we were talking about of like the reflection, Mm -hmm. right? Seeing someone doing what you desire to do. And I, I mean, I'm curious to know if there's a human that hasn't had that experience of seeing someone or something and being like soul lights up and they're Mm -hmm. like that. That's what I want to do. And maybe it still is to come for you. If you haven't had that experience, you know, pay attention, listen for it, be aware of it. And I am so grateful to be in this stage in my career where I'm I'm starting to really get those reflections back, especially mm. from women, because our music scene is so mm-hmm. male dominated, mm-hmm. seriously, still yeah. to this day. It's like the percentages, it's just so much more um so many more men in the space, especially in the community that I'm in, which is the DJ world and the transformational DJ realms. And you look at a lineup and primarily it is very Mm -hmm. male dominant. And also I can't really point to too many other artists that are singing over top of their music as well as DJing and, and even less that are crafting an entire show and a narrative. And it's so cool to now see other artists that are coming mm-hmm. up and and thanking me for kind of showing me that it was yeah. possible. And now I'm on seeing them on lineups and I'm seeing them come up in the scene and I'm like, okay, like this is happening. More women are singing over their music. More women are taking ownership of their own production mm. and and leaning in. And it's it's just such a powerful um, mirroring. And then I see them and it inspires me. And it's this never ending Mm -hmm. cycle of inspiration where we're getting to catalyze each other and move each other forward and, and bring more of that divine feminine essence into the space of music and onto the stages. Because especially we say, you know, there's, we're in this chapter of the rise of the feminine and 
ultimately, what does that mean? And the feminine is something that is within yep. all of us. It's it's the force within every single human, male or female, that is receptive, that is listening, that is open, that flows. And I just think to how much of a more graceful and beautiful world we will have as the men and the women embrace that ability to flow. It's even a dance for me. You know, I'm I'm very driven and I'm moving and I work in my masculine often as I'm crafting and 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 moving my train forward and that ah oh, that release that willingness to surrender and to become and to be moved by life and to be in the the organic flow of it is so beautiful and and I'm really grateful to be able to pave this path for a lot of other women in mm. this space. Yeah, I love that. I love that. And yeah, I agree seeing women especially you know producing DJing and it's good. It's always like adds for me an extra element of like, okay, this is extra cool. Cause we're so used to seeing guys, you know, sort of in that position. And it just, so that's yeah. like, like so many things in life. I think whenever it's been maybe underplayed or a disadvantage or whatever, then when it actually gets its due, it makes it that much sweeter. Um, and I think that's mm -hmm. really a big part of the dance in physicality in general, it's like, you know, contrast, it's, it's all happening for love. And, and that requires darkness, you know, for there to be light, there's got to be darkness for there to be, uh, you know, love, there's got to be hate. And, you know, it's sort of that same dance. And so it's, it's very cool to see people like you and, and others stepping into that role and doing it really, really well. And so it doesn't surprise me at all that you've had a lot of women come up to you and they're inspired. And I think that's just beginning for you because you're still so early on your journey. And, you know, um, I mean, you've okay. got, I guess, a good time to maybe talk a little bit about High Vibe Fest coming up and a little bit uh, what we're, uh, what's uh, coming up with industry. I mean, there's so much exciting magic and co-creation ahead. Um, why, why don't you share a little bit about High Vibe Fest? Yeah, we're so stoked. We're coming right up on it. High Vibe Fest is going to be May 4th through May 8th. And super proud to say we have tons of women on that lineup. It's a very um, well-balanced lineup, which I'm super grateful to Nate for, who's crafted the lineup. Now, and, Nate, um, let me just interject real quick, is music artist, equanimous <laughs> Nate Stein, who is also a dear friend and was on the show a while back. Um, if you go search, you know, his name, you'll, you'll find that episode and is Ruby's yeah, partner. Look up his music. It, he's it, incredible. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and he's the visionary of high vibe fest and also high vibe records, which was the seating before the festival. And what High Vibe Fest really provides is a space for these high vibe artists to share their vibe, to share their music, to share their inspiration. And the intention of the festival is for us to experience how high our vibe can be. And that reaches, you know, what we're experiencing on the dance floor, the music we're listening to, and even as deep into the food that we're offering, making sure that everything is organic, that it's sourced from a high vibe place, that every part of the process is contributing to our more beautiful future. And it's going to be so epic. We've got some really exciting surprises coming up um, that are just going to make the experience so magical. And it's at a beautiful property in Cobb, California, Northern California, early May, gorgeous time of year. And yeah, the, for me, I'm most excited about mm -hmm. the music mm -hmm. for this one because the hand-selected artists that are at this festival are literally my favorite artists. Like this is the type of music that my playlists are filled with. And I go to festivals year round and I hear a lot of good music, but this selection of artists mm. is just next level. And then on top of that, we've got three different workshop stages going through the day. Brandon's actually going to be doing a two workshop, actually conscious conversations. Yeah. Too. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. The yeah, industry yeah, yeah. as well, which is a perfect segue into talking about that. So, yeah, there's tons of growth and transformation to be had. And yeah, it's just, it's such a special event. We had one last year and 
people's reviews were just off the charts. I think it's the difference of when the festival's core intention mm-hmm. is the vibe. That really yeah. sets the yeah. tone. <laughs> and then everything from there is just like, how could you go wrong when the vibe is what's set? Right. <laughs> right. And and Nate, as the founder of High Vibe Records and the festival, and you know, obviously your partner, you must like his vibe. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> I definitely he's like his vibe. such a heart-centered, incredible human. And um, yeah, it's it, it was really cool to come last year and see the first the first uh, high vibe fest and it sounds like it's only grown and expanded and and to be able to contribute this year something that we do here at the mystic manor me and um karen uh my partner uh do these conscious conversation circles and they're always just so nourishing and i just love having the interactivity with people and hearing people share uh, whatever you know downloads and wisdom and and things have come up for them and or you know people sharing things that they want to ask for collective guidance and input on. And it's just, it's such a, speaking of being in receptive mode and flow state that really uh, these, that particular workshop, that's what it'll be all about. And then in addition to that, I'm going to, for the first time ever, I mean, other than this podcast, I've shared with you guys uh, sort of the journey of industry, uh, you know, the first version of this um, conscious art community or music distribution platform was released in 2009. And it was sort of like at the time, you know, after the most intense spiritual breadcrumbs I've ever had, and I have a lot of that sort of stuff, um, I I launched it and it was sort of like MySpace uh, meets Spotify before Spotify, called industry spelled like T-R-E-E, the idea reinventing the industry. And everything has sort of a tree tree theme on it. There's branches and there was a, a Currency, the currency is called Blooms, pre-crypto that we paid everyone in. And so I, I realize now, wow. yeah, I realize now that it's, there was thousands of artists on the platform and it was growing and it was like a full, like I said, MySpace with its own monetary payout system. And it, it was pretty robust, uh, what I had built and, and then hit some personal challenge in my life at the time. And Um, my brother was my business partner, his partner, unfortunately committed suicide. And so we ended up putting the whole thing on ice, uh, and saying, okay, I'm going to come back to industry. I need to, you know, the investor that I had pulled out their money and just, you know, the, the challenges came. And so I said, okay, I'm going to put this on ice. I am able to manifest the money to do this right. And I'm going to do that and then come back to it. And that's when I, uh, ended up launching, getting led to launch this travel company that went on to be an Inc. fastest growing private company and hundred plus employees. It was like a tiger by the tail and we're doing 10 million a year in revenue. And that was such a tiger by the tail. I didn't ever go back to industry until, you know, a year and a half or so ago, I started exploring using blockchain technology. How could we bring this back? And, you know, is this really what it's supposed to be? The, you know, hero's journey tale of bringing this project that I had had such crazy spiritual guidance to do all those years back. And then that guidance came back again in very dramatic fashion. And here we are. And the first, uh, you know, song that we're going to release is yours, Ruby, uh, along with Nate, Equanimous and Johnny June. Such an incredible track. It's the perfect track. And then um, one other track with uh, my good friend, Direct the Menace. And so we're going to do that as a as a sort of a giveaway to start building the community, Um, you know, beginning late summer. Uh, kind of time frame. You guys will be hearing more about that. Um, and if you want to hear the whole inspired industry synchronicity story, I, I did talk about it on uh, episode 1532. If you go back, you can you can check that out and, and listen to it. And I'll put a link to uh, the, the website where I have a little, hey, give us your name if you're interested when this gets going. And here's, by the way, the podcast where you can hear about it. So that's it. And, Oh, that's so cool. I I was definitely, I was about to ask you that. So yeah, you yeah, yeah. That, in there. Like, that, you, that URL stories. is industry. It's just industry. I-N-D-U-S-T-R dot E-E. Uh, that's the website. And you'll see just a you know, name, email. We'll let you know when things get going. And here's the story. The story is a trip though, Ruby. If you ever get a chance to listen to it, I think I've told Nate the whole thing before. I don't think I've told you that I recall, but uh, it- No, I haven't. I definitely- yeah, It involves it. a supposed time traveler and- really trippy stuff. So either something that's really messing with me or this is going to have very far reaching 
implications. And it's, you know, it started going back. I mean, you know, my journey with this 2006, you know, when this, this whole journey began. Wow. And so here we are and it's, it's apparently meant to come back and I'm, I could not be more honored for you to be a part of the, you know, the beginning of that. And in mm-hmm. the way I view it, it is, it's going to be a DAO. So, you know, decentralized, uh, autonomous organization. It's like, I'm hoping to catalyze and steward this vision, but it's not the Brandon Beecham make me rich, you know, corporation. It's ours. It's, it's we. And, and I think that like you talked about what yeah. the why, you know, I've been going since 2000, my first, um, burn was 2005. And since that, and then Kundalini, my band, I mean, we had, you know, we would have Alex Gray artwork playing behind us. This is 1999, 2000. People are like, and I'm talking about spiritual wow. stuff and we would paint on the lead singer. I was the MC and my uh, best friend was a singer. So we're kind of like the Beastie Boys meet Incubus meets 311 meets the police kind of vibe. And we would paint sh- oh chakras on his, he's like six foot four. So we'd paint chakras all the way going up on him. And it's like, people were like back then, what is, what are these people talking about? What is this artwork? What is, you know, I'm so like OG with a lot of this stuff. And, and now I go to festivals and it's like, you know, it's so prevalent in our world. And back then it was like, people just were like, what are you smoking? <laughs> this is weird. What is all this spiritual stuff? And, and, you know, 2000, 2005 was um, the first burn that I went to. And ever since then, going to tons of transformational festivals like yourself, everyone's like, oh, how do we create this permanently? How do we create permanent village infrastructure? And, and, you know, my vision with industry is let's use the art. Let's, you know, all the art that makes up this incredible musician, these incredible painters, incredible speakers and authors. And let's create a, a, a DAO where we come together with joint, you know, decision making and power. And let's, let's, let's use the art to fuel permanent village infrastructure and decide collectively how we, the funds that are generated, how we direct those. Okay. Let's throw an event. Oh, let's buy this piece of land. Oh, let's, let's, you know, I, I ultimate vision I see is like a permanent festival Disneyland, right? Where we have, it's, it's always set up and we're bringing people through having transformational experiences. And it's, as opposed to you, you can relate, you know, being, so tapped into this industry, I mean, this uh, scene and community like myself, it's like, it can sometimes feel like a bubble, right? You're seeing the same people. I mean, it is growing. And it's like, how do we reach people outside of our container, reach even more people with this? You know, some of the musicians and artists in our community are so talented. And it's like, they're not being heard nearly as much as you know, bad bunny or whatever mainstream stuff. And it's, and it's like, right. this is a crime. This need, we need to get this out there. And that's really what industry is all about. How do we come together to market it, to promote it, to get behind it and all mutually benefit and, and, and then, you know, create community together around it. So that's, that's the grand vision. And right. Just- oh my gosh. I love it. I love it. I'm so honored to be a part of the the like official launch, especially hearing how far back the vision reaches. And I'm just feeling so mind blown at how long you have been in this yeah. game. <laughs> I mean, minute. you really are like the the, the granddaddy, uh-huh. like overseeing this world be born in certain ways. And I, I'm I'm finding myself be really surprised because you don't feel old to me, but you are holding these codes of of really pioneering this. So I just want to say thank you also for being one of the early adopters of this way. And my mom was an early adopter yogi and was in Salt Lake City, Utah, like doing asanas and teaching yoga when that was just so weird. I mean, it was such a like people didn't understand this meditation, yoga. What is that? Like so far from from any sort of um, like validated known thing. That was good for you. And nowadays it's like there's a yoga studio right. on every corner, right. you know, and it's so beautiful to just remember that this is growing and we're still young and we're still this, you know, we are a bubble right now. The whole transformational community and the festival scene, it's a tiny, tiny percentage of the world. But what would happen if we could bring that synchronicity and magic that we can experience at these events to a greater audience? And could that solve the 
crisis of loneliness that we're experiencing in our day and age and just this age of depression that we're we're seeing so much so many youth especially that are faced with severe anxiety and depression and they're comparing themselves and they're on their phones all day and what if we could bring the magic and the limitlessness of what we experience at a festival to those people through the art. I think it's an incredible question and such a worthwhile journey. And I feel really excited to be able to witness it and grow with it and grow with the movement and be a part of history in this way. Well, you are definitely poised to do that. And thank you for saying all that. It's it's exciting. Definitely. It's been a long view in a lot of ways. And, you know, I'm 48 and I feel like I'm 21. And You know, it's funny because you talked about the magic that's created at festivals. It's like one of them, you know, I feel like when we come together, we create a container. One of the most magical um, experiences I've had was at a transformational festival. I feel like we, we disrupt the field in a good way together and it allows for magic to come in. And I had this intense channeling where this person came through and they're like, you are the soul of the eternal child and everyone you touch will help transform and just went into this very intense stuff for me. And it's like, that's what's exciting for me is like being the cutting edge of like, here's what it means to age. Here's what it means. Like compared to what my father was at my, it's like, you know, 50 years from now, I literally think I could look and feel more youthful than I do now with tech understanding of technology, health, um, you know, spirituality, you take all the things that are converging right now and all, you know, old ideas are out the window of, you know, we, they're talking about like, we're a few years from, you know, reaching escape velocity, which is, you know, who is it? Kurzweil, I think is saying in the next few years, we'll hit escape velocity, which means our technology is surpassing our aging. And therefore we could all potentially live to be limitless aside from an accident, you know, and that's happening now. Like, yeah. And you start understanding and, and living with that feeling of like, oh, this isn't the end. I'm not winding down. I'm just beginning. And I get to be the example, the cutting edge of that. And we all do, you know, and, um, and that Mm. feels very empowering. And um, so I'm just, yeah, I'm super grateful to be that industry is meant to be a hero's journey tale and it's made it very clear that it wants another shot at uh, at making making its its comeback. comeback. It's so And the song that you've you know, co-written and produced is incredible. You guys are going to absolutely love it. I'm so excited to share. And uh, yeah, like I said, if you go to industry, the website, I'll put the link in the show notes as well. And you can kind of give us your name and email and we'll let you know as things start coming out. And then also where, uh, where is the best place for them to get tickets for high vibe fest? I hope that if you're able to come, uh, me and Ruby would both love to hang out with you because we'll both be there. And uh, that would be awesome to see a bunch of key heads at the event. Yeah. Oh, it's going to be so, so fun. It's, yeah, High Vibe Fest. Just look it up. Get your tickets. It is right around the corner. So we are extremely, extremely excited. And, yeah, it's, you know, this is the time where the ones come together. And I'm – so intrigued to see where it goes. You know, it's like this is year two of this, this experiment and year, you know, whatever day of this lifespan of this movement. And it feels like there's something so much bigger moving all of this Mm -hmm. along. You know, High Vibe Fest, it was something that very clearly wanted Mm -hmm. to happen. Like the event itself was driving the energy and kind of me and Nate were both like, wow, like this thing really wants to happen. (laughs) And it it was us just like taking the lead of whatever energy was in front of us and just being like, okay, like we will lean in and we will support making this a reality. But it feels like the current of consciousness and and the the people that are coming into themselves and and remembering our inherent ability to create and be infinite is really what's driving all of this and it's just very very exciting yeah. to be a part of i'm just i can't wait to see <laughs> i agree i'm with you it's it's the beginning of the beginning still and there's so much to be excited and optimistic about and um yeah, hopefully some of you are able to come join us. 
uh, for yeah. High Vibe Fest. And, if you want to yeah. have a little hookup too, for those of you that are listening, um, you can use the code VIBES at checkout for 10% off your ticket, V-I-B-E-S. Also, kids get in free. It's a family-friendly fen- event, so if you do have little ones, they're welcome to come. We've got a playground and a kid's zone they can uh, so cool. play in and And then, you know, you can have your also adult transformation as well. And yeah, there's definitely something for everyone at this one. So please join us. It's going to be magical. Yeah. Yeah. And of course, camping and and everything as well. So that's the thing I love about um, Northern California um, events and and festivals is, you know, oftentimes, especially this time of year, I imagine the weather is going to be pretty mild Mm and nice and cool and as opposed to like the burn where you literally get melted, yeah. you know, by the heat and dust. And to get and, to be immersed so. in nature. It's so important yeah. for us humans so to get good. off our screens and get in front of people and move our bodies and get our feet in the grass. And these little moments out of time where we pause our daily programming to take ourselves on an adventure, just it it is so opening to unlimited possibilities. Mm. And if you're living in tune with your own guidance system and if something in your soul says, go, jump, buy the ticket, lean in, and you follow those impulses, it's so limitless of where it can lead. And so, yeah, yeah, I think just if we're all listening into those little whispers, then we can be really led on the journey. Literally some of the most magical experiences I've had in my life have taken place at transformational festivals like Me just like this too. and and um yeah some of the crazy stories wild stories i've shared in the past you know on this podcast uh, come from these events so hope to see you all there and uh well i do have one as we kind of wind down here i do have one uh question i wanted to go to um that we haven't touched on yet and that is a little bit of story time yeah. uh i love to hear stories of synchronicity or serendipity or positive paranormal story. So wondering if you have something inspiring up your sleeve to share. Yeah. Oh, man. I have a recent one that was so profound. I actually, I touched on it a little bit earlier, but back to the Transformational Festival. So I found this world when I was 19. And I, one of the early festivals that I went to was Lucidity Festival. And mm, the first year, really? Oh, wow. 2013 yeah, it, was the first yeah. non burn. Yes. Really? Was it the same yes, year for 2013. Yep. No way. We were there together. So we were there together. And that was a huge catalyst for me. And I went back again and again each year me telling too. the story. This is the first year I didn't meet. This is the first year I haven't went other than the oh. COVID years since 2013. Oh my gosh. Yeah, it's a it's a potent sure. one. And I think it's something about the size too, like why I love High Vibe Fest, especially right now. It's like we're at that size where you yeah. leave the weekend kind of meeting everybody and you, yep. you it's like small enough that you get to really yep. go deep and get intimate with the people that are there. That's something that's so yep. nice about Lucidity. They've kept it nice and tight. And so yep. the – the thing about lucidity that really sets it apart is it is following a narrative. So every year yep. they have a story that's being told and there's this hero's journey that the event is is catalyzing and they have these immersive characters and every year they do a show and they've got this story that's been telling itself throughout time and I always went through media. The first year I was filming a show called Be Human, which now is a podcast with Roxanne Ruby. You can check it out, Be Human podcast. Um, and But at that time, we just had a camera. We were asking people, what does it mean to be human? And we went around and asked everyone. The next year, I went as social media and I was the dreamer who was – following the event around and going live. And so I was getting to see this world and learn the narrative. And I actually have a video on my phone from 2018 of Jonah, who's one of the main guys that creates the Mm -hmm. event. And he's one of the main storytellers. He's been on the podcast, actually. Okay. Yeah. So Jonah's epic. And he was telling this cast of – the media team. And he was like, yeah, so there's the elemental realms and we have the animal totems. And then there's Lucy, who's the one who's dreaming up the universe, but she hasn't incarnate into this realm yet. She's just in the mm. ethers, dreaming it up. Mm. And I have mm. a video of my on my phone of it. Last year, 
I get a call from Teddy Saunders and he's like, hey, I'm filming this I'm filming this movie with Lucidity and I put a casting out to, you know, actors access and I've got a thousand submissions, but I think you are her. Mm. And I'm like, huh, okay, tell me more. Mm-hmm. And this is like a year after my acting sabbatical, like <laughs> made mm-hmm. my declarations, ma- gave my my boundaries. And he's like, it would be a story of the great synthesis. And Lucy is the one dreaming this world awake. And he c- tells me the story. And I'm just like feeling pretty mind blown at this point. And I'm like, okay, well, I think that I I am her. <laughs> in ways Amazing. that I didn't even realize. And so yeah. we ended up filming the film and then being at, at the event last year, when we filmed the last scene, he's like, you are the one, Lucy. Do you get it? Like, this is the great synthesis. And we we call rap. And when he was speaking to me, I had a vision of me performing main stage at Lucidity, which was a big mm-hmm. deal. Like, that mm-hmm. would be – that was just like, oh, my gosh, that would be just life right there. So right, good. Right, right, right. And I told the crew after, we're like, yay, that's a rap. And I was like, I think I'm going to play main stage next year. And they were all like, wow. yeah, you got this. Fast forward to this year coming up, I'm – you know, we're, what was it, in the winter sometime and I had applied to the festival and I'm kind of twiddling my fingers and like hoping I get picked. And Nate was like, you should reach out. You should reach out direct to the people. And I was like nervous and had my kind of like hesitations around it. But finally I I mustered up my strength and my confidence and I sent an email to the head booker and he emails me back within the hour wow, Ruby, you have really good timing. I have one slot left that I have to fill with a woman specifically, and I want it to be you. Like this feels so synchronistic. So I get this slot 4.30 at Sunday on the Lucid stage, the main stage, and got to live out that dream. And at the event this year, it was so profound to touch in with friends that they've seen me for the last decade growing up in this community and being the little girl that was excited and asking what it was to be human and singing in the open mic and and just kind of being catalyzed from this environment, being awakened in this world. And they were like, Ruby, you really are Lucy. Like you are (laughs) that archetype. And, and And then I had the realization too of like, you know, we are all Lucy. Like we are all the ones dreaming awake this lucid universe mm-hmm. that is our own world. And to get to have that very obvious reflection from this environment that had raised me was so moving and so powerful. And yeah, it just it really landed. It landed so much for me as someone that really believes in our dreams and believes that anyone can reach their dreams and to be validated in that of mm. this very tangible example and story. It was it was just so profound. And so I leave you with, you know, send that email, do that thing, lean out of your comfort zone of whatever that one push you might have to give on your end that where the universe can meet you on the path of your dreams it's it's yeah. not without our action that we get to be in the creation seat. And so I think it's because I took that action, because I leaned in and I I I would was receiving a lot of the gifts, but there was that one risk that I was willing to take mm-hmm. in that moment that landed me the dream. And wow. I think that that brings it really home into our I own love that. power to create. I love that story. Wow. So, <laughs> so cool. magic. I, I'm only the only disappointment I have around it is the year I choose not I to go know. to Lucidity. <laughs> you're on main stage. So I have a feeling though I'll be seeing you on many a main stage. So you know, it's happening we'll more make and more. I'm feeling so grateful. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Envision you are incredible. And my partner Karen, uh, those of you listening, have she's been on before. Um She got to go and be a dancer uh, sort of last minute with you. And she was, it was like made her envision. She's like, oh, it was like a dream come true. And Ruby's so amazing. And some other person didn't have the right fans. So I got to be on, you know, 
step into this last right minute place, role. Right, right time. Right time. Yep, yep. Totally. She yep. was and- right there and present, leaning in and ready with the tools. And she's so talented yep. and she just got to, you know, step in in that way. She was ready yeah. for it. She was ready for the opportunity. Yeah. It's so magical. You are so magical, and this has been such a magical podcast. I so Yay. appreciate you taking the time to connect and share and inspire. I know there's so many inspired souls out there feeling the the high vibe emanations from from you. And um, yeah, I do have one. Uh, well, two things. One, what is the best way for people to follow you, connect with you, reach out, etc. Yeah, I love staying connected. And please, if you did hear this interview, connect up and let me know. Instagram is a great way to stay tuned. I respond to every single message that comes in. It's actually me. (laughs) And then the music is on all platforms, Spotify, Apple Music, wherever you listen, I am. And yeah, if you want to kind of get the scope on the tour and and where I'll be, you can check out rubychase.world. That's my website and there's links to all the other avenues there, but yeah, I definitely part of my passion within what I do is staying connected. So, I'd love to hear from you. Definitely mm. special when you post one of the songs or share your own experience and it allows me to kind of feel where those songs are moving. So, please mm-hmm. do that. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. And uh Perhaps we should play one of your songs as we exit off. Should we cue up Thrive? Yeah, let's cue it up. Okay, all right. We'll do that. And uh, I do have one final question before you get the the pleasure of hearing Ruby Chase's new song, Thrive. Uh, And the question is this. In 60 seconds or less, what is the meaning of life, according to Ruby Chase? Mm. The meaning of life is to live is to feel, is to unwind the threads of who we think we need to be to discover who we truly are underneath. Mm. And I feel that that can be identified by what lights us up, by what brings us joy, by what makes us feel. And the deeper we go into that, I find that there will probably be an inclination to then create something, to share something, and that is where you get to give it back. So that dance Mm. of giving, receiving, creating, and sharing, and being in reciprocity with the universe. Yes. I love that. You are such an inspiration and Mm, so appreciate you. And uh, yeah, I'll be seeing you here in a couple weeks at High Vibe Fest. Hope to see you guys there as well. In the meantime, vibe. yeah, in the meantime, enjoy this new track called Thrive by Ruby Chase. Till next time, journey well. Love you so, so much. Thanks, everyone. Yeah. I got that boom pal banging at that boom box. It's a mood feeling so good. We abundant, know what we want, yeah, it's a vibe, yeah, we thrive. So tell me, can you feel the synchronicity when you're dancing with the divinity? Keep it flowing, feel the energy, baby, you can call it destiny. I got that boom pal banging out the boom box. It's a mood, feeling so good. We abundant, know what we want. Yeah, it's a vibe. Yeah, we thrive. There's a sacred art to the art 
track of the story keep it clear with the intentions cause we know that we are worthy you can choose the part of the art that you radiate cause living in the moment are the moments we appreciate i got that boom pal banging out that boom box it's a mood feeling so good we abundant know what we want yeah it's a vibe yeah we thrive we thrive yeah come on thrive yeah We thrive, yeah?